Hi everyone, my name is Erica Ortega, also known as Mrs. Ortega to my students, and I will be doing the Butterfly Life Cycle lesson to my class of kindergarten students. Now to go ahead and begin the Butterfly Life Cycle lesson, I would first start by asking my students questions if they know anything about the life cycle. I would go ahead and probe them and ask them to give me any information that they may know about butterflies in general. Once we went ahead and we had that little discussion to go ahead and open up the lesson, I would read aloud to them The Very Hungry Caterpillar. Now, unfortunately, I don't actually have the book with me. I have it at my school. But if I didn't have the book, I would go ahead and I would play the video of The Very Hungry Caterpillar from youtube.com on the Promethean board. Now, this would be a great way of going ahead and adding technology into your lesson, which a lot of administrators like to see nowadays. I'm going to go ahead and show you part of the video that I would be showing my students and I will be showing you here on my laptop. We get so, it. You don't sometimes, really unfortunately, want your there are um, advertisements on YouTube. So I just go ahead and I scroll up and I wait for it to pass. Now, here is the video of the Very Hungry Caterpillar. I'm not going to go ahead and play the whole thing, but I just want you to kind of get an idea. The Very Hungry Caterpillar. In the light of the moon, a little egg lay on a leaf. One Sunday morning, the warm sun came up and pop, out of the egg, came a tiny and very hungry caterpillar. Now I would go ahead and I would play the whole video to catch my students' attention. But right now, all I'm gonna do is just give you a little preview so that way you have um, an idea of what it would look like. Okay, so after I would go ahead and I would be introducing some vocabulary words to my students. Now some vocabulary words that maybe they haven't heard of before like chrysalis or metamorphosis, pupa, larva, I would go ahead and I would write those, board, um, those words on my whiteboard and I would explain to the students what each word meant and maybe even do a little picture to show them. Once we went ahead and I went over all of the vocabulary words, I would then go ahead and continue to talk about the butterfly life cycle by showing the students a video called Metamorphosis by Jack Hartman. Now, Jack Hartman is a great video person on YouTube because he has a lot of fun songs and dances and the kids really like him. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show you the Metamorphosis song to kind of get an idea of what we would be doing in the classroom. Children's songs, sing and move along. Children's songs, take your brain and body strong. So right here is a perfect image for the students to be able to see the life cycle of a butterfly. Now I would go ahead and I would play the whole video for them and once we were done I would have the students sit down and I would grab their attention again by creating an anchor chart. So the, an anchor chart is usually made out of like this white paper. Now I have my different scent markers and things that I would go ahead and I would create my anchor chart of the actual butterfly life cycle. Now I went ahead and I found these great different um, activity bundle on Teachers Pay Teachers and it pretty much is the butterfly life cycle. Now it starts off by showing the stages. So stage one would show the eggs, 
a girl butterfly lays eggs on a leaf. So there she would be. That would be stage one. Stage two, the larvae, which is a caterpillar, also known as a caterpillar, and I would have explained that to the students while I was going over the vocabulary words. So a caterpillar hatches, it begins to eat and grow. Then stage three, the pupa, the caterpillar is done growing, it makes a chrysalis. So then I would have also explained to the students that a pupa and the chrysalis pretty much mean the same thing. And then they stage four, an adult, a butterfly comes out, it is an adult. So I would be printing this out and cutting it and gluing it onto my white paper and I would be displaying this in the classroom. Now again, I would review it, I would go over with my students, I would call on them, and I would want I would um, be making sure that they know exactly what they were doing, okay? I would also maybe print this out and also display it on my whiteboard, which I think it would be a great reference for the students as well. Now, once they were, I was done explaining, going over the vocabulary words, um, going ahead and making that anchor chart, reviewing with the students, then it would be time for them to go ahead and work on their independent work. Now, of course, in kindergarten, we know that we can't just give the student things. We have to model, model, model. So the first thing that I would start with would be by giving them this worksheet. Okay, and this is a great little worksheet because it adds, um, you know, they get to color, they get to glue, they get to do a couple of fun stuff in it. So the first thing that I would do is that I would explain to the students that we would be coloring the butterfly. Now I would go ahead and I would model first coloring the butterfly. I would tell them obviously the whole butterfly can't be red or brown or black. We want to see several colors in a butterfly, especially with how beautiful they are. So I would model by coloring my butterfly. After that, I would then go ahead and explain, okay, we're going to be using different pastas or beans to go ahead and glue inside the circles to go ahead and show the different stages of the butterfly. So I would explain that an egg would be white beans, the caterpillar would be a rotini pasta, a chrysalis would be a shell pasta, and a butterfly would be bow tie pasta. So once I have colored and once I have explained the different pastas and beans that we would use in each section, I would go ahead and glue it. Now, once I had modeled for myself, that might, I'm still not going to go ahead and give my students their um, paper yet. The next thing that I would do would be to go ahead and pass out maybe one worksheet to each group of students. And then I would pass out the beans and the pasta. And then I would have the students work together to go ahead and place the right pastas and beans in the correct category of the butterfly life cycle. I would go around, I would help those students if they need it, and um, I would make sure that all of the students have it correct. Then once they have all had it correct and they all work together to find the answers, we did I do, we do, um, we do, then it would be you do. I would go ahead and first give every student their own worksheet of the butterfly. I would have them color using appropriate colors. They would also be writing their name and date at the top because that's always very important. Once I have colored everything beautifully, I would go around and pass out the different pastas and beans needed for the activity. I would also go around and probably speck glue in each circle just because Elmer's glue in kindergarten doesn't always go so well. Um, and then once they were done, I would go ahead and collect their activities by number. And I would, um, I would collect the activity by number and then I would set it somewhere in the classroom to let it dry before I would hang it up. Now, I wanna go ahead and talk about the home learning. So once we had went ahead and we have finished our assignment, I would go ahead and let the students know that they would be having um, home learning on the butterfly life cycle. Now to go ahead and enhance what they learned in the classroom, they would go ahead and have a butterfly life cycle cut and paste worksheet where they would be putting the life cycle in order. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you the worksheet they would be using. Now, if I go down here and I scroll down, I continue, oh, here's some uh, labels. Right here would be the butterfly life cycle where they need to glue the correct picture and they would also label the life cycle. And I would collect this the following day, but most likely for a grade. 
Now I want to go ahead and I want to talk about a few things that um, while I was working on my lesson that maybe I had to go ahead and modify. So one of the first things that I had to modify when I was completing my lesson plan were the objectives. So um, I had to learn that a lesson plan objective has to be measurable and it has to ma match the, um, the assessment goal, pretty, pretty much what the student wants to learn or needs to learn. I had to edit the home learning activity by giving a little bit of more information and I needed to um, find better differentiated instruction strategies for a student with ADHD or a student with dys dyslexia. So furthermore, I want to go ahead and just talk about a little bit more. So um, I definitely think that effective strategies for our diverse learners would be small group testing, breaking assignment into smaller pieces, repeating those directions, and reading aloud instructions, providing breaks when needed, and giving that proximity control. Now, all of these would be great ideas to use in this activity. You can use every any of those accommodations in this activity to go ahead and meet the needs of those um, diverse learners. Now, when it comes to grading, okay, when I would be grading this activity, I would be seeing that the students would be placing the correct bean or pasta in the correct stage of the life cycle. I wouldn't be grading so much on coloring, but I would be grading for them to know the different shapes of the life cycle. I would also go ahead and grade the home learning to make sure that they cut and glued all the pieces in the correct stage and that they labeled the pictures correctly as well. Now, um, an E would be having everything correct. I would say maybe if they got one wrong, then it would be an S. If they got two wrong, it would be an M. And if they got three or four wrong, then I would go ahead and give a U. Um, I think that pretty much sums up everything upon my lesson. Oh, um, one more thing, if the assessment closure. So if I would go ahead and end my lesson at school before passing out the home learning activity, I would ask the students exit questions. And these questions would have to do with maybe the life cycle or what a vocabulary word, word meant. And it would go ahead and show me that they were learned what they needed to learn today. I'm going to go ahead and show you my final lesson plan draft just because I think it's important. So right here I started with the title, then I continued with the grade level, the subject, the objective, the essential question, standards, content outline, differentiated instruction, the materials needed, technology, which was the Promethean board, the instructional procedures, the assessment, so this is the exit question, so three things I learned today, two things I found interesting, one question I still have, the home learning, and the references to my lesson. So I hope you guys enjoyed my mini lesson on the butterfly life cycle, and if you have any questions, feel free to message me. Thanks, bye-bye.